as a state minister of, uh, of education. I, I remember very clearly there was one teacher who has not uh, received his salary for for three months. Yeah. And it was due to the challenges with the name, the name that he has in his ID and the name in the payroll. And uh, he has not been paid. So when Hello guys, welcome to Alvin 211 Media, and of course I'm your host Ian. Uh, we're very much delighted for your support and very much happy for what we are doing together. Keep on subscribing and supporting our YouTube channel. Uh, we are going to grow together and do much more. Uh, today we are brought to you uh, Honorable Malong, uh, Garang Paul Malong. Yeah, yeah you got it. Yeah, <laughs> you know this this like I I should probably calling you Malong, so I don't know why, but. It's, it's the English way. Yeah, mm. yeah. So welcome to our YouTube channel today. Mm, thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah, you're highly welcome. Mm. This has been done on media. Uh, Malong is a, is a former state uh, minister for youth, youth, sport and culture, right? Yes. Yeah. And he's also a graduate from University of Nairobi. Uh, currently, he's an author. He wrote, uh, he wrote three books, if I'm not wrong. Yes. And... Today we are going to discuss uh, only on these two books, the religion and democracy, and why South Sudan matters. Is this the book? No. The suffocation of a new democracy. democracy. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Yeah. So you're very much welcome. Yeah. Let us start with the the religion and democracy. So from this cover, from the cover of this book, yeah, yeah. I think this is the prologue. I envision a solution where all people have religious freedom. And not all people are politicians. The independence state of the Republic of South Sudan should be a secular state with separation of religion and politics. So I think this is the theme of this book. Yes. This is what pushes you yes. to write this book, right? Yes. yes. So can you give us more uh, clarification on what is really in the book? Uh, the Religion and Democracy uh, is my third book. And uh, I've authored uh, three books. Yeah. Uh, the first one was Why South Sudan Matters. Matters, yeah. It matters to the kids, it matters to the generation, and it matters to all the inhabitants of South Sudan. Yeah, for sure. And the second book is uh, it's right here, The Suffocation of a New Democracy. Yeah. Uh, which I believe the democracy has been suffocated. There's no clear... Uh, there's no democracy in South Sudan in South for Sudan, the last yeah. uh, a couple of years. And uh, also there's no freedom of expression for the young people and for the talented young men and women. And uh, the third book, as you said, is this, The Religion and, Demo the religion and Democracy. Uh, I envision a solution where all people are religious, but not all people are politicians. Are politicians. And I believe that uh, South Sudan... Uh, we can all follow any religion. We have the freedom to, to worship God in, in any way. But uh, not all of us are politicians. And I envision that South Sudan, to be strong, we have to separate the two institutions. The religion and democracy. And democracy, the politics. Yeah. Yes. So what is really linking these things up? Because we can't really get a clear definition or maybe a clear distinction between these two things, religion and the democracy? Uh, they they, they in, uh, intertwine a lot uh, most of the time. Yeah. But uh, if you look at the, our background at South Sudanese, one of the agenda, uh, apart from the Nile dredging uh, that caused the civil war, we, we also have religion dem uh, differences yeah. with, the, with the northern Sudan. Yeah. And uh, the differences uh, were widened apart by the politics. By the politics, yeah, for sure. Yes, and and that made us separate from uh, northern from Sudan. The northern Sudan. And now we are South Sudanese. Yeah. And as South Sudanese, I believe that uh, we should not mix the state with politics, with the religion. We need to separate that any we can all worship our gods. But we all come as South Sudanese. Yeah. And any political 
affiliation should not be based on religion. Yes. So that is the brief message. That is, yeah. that is in the book. Yeah. The religion and democracy. Yeah. yeah. So because uh, it's, I think it's really a concern. Uh, most of the people, most of the young South Sudan, most of these uh, big politicians, yeah, mm -hmm. I feel or we feel like they don't separate religion from from the politics. Yeah. Because they are mixed up. Yeah. You find even the 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 one who has the church are practicing practicing politics mm -hmm. within the church. So we really want to know the how these people can keep up from being politicians and at the same time preach it in the church. Uh, you know uh, that is where now we can have a better state of where to follow, where to go, and who actually to identify as a leader. Uh, you know, uh, our brothers, your your own brother might be a Muslim. Yeah. While the other one is a Christian. Yeah. And they are all brothers. There's no difference. So if you are a Muslim, you're still our brother. If you are a Christian, you're still our brother. But the politics mm, is the interest. We shouldn't bring that uh, political interest to church or to mosque. Yeah, you you might find a pastor. It's called Mohammed in South Sudan. It's possible. Yeah, for sure. So does that mean that name only belong to to Muslim? No. So. I, I believe that uh, as Muslim and as uh, Christian, we can live as brothers and we can have different interests and different talent. And that uh, should not separate us once again, as it has happened before. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. And this, the, the, your first book, it seemed to have uh, uh, a clear theme and a, a theme which drives more why South Sudan matters, yes? Yeah. Why does it matter in the book? Uh, in, in that book, there is a narration of, of, of two young uh, children, a boy and a girl, okay. uh, who, were, who lost their parents during the Civil War. And uh, they came to Juba the, during independence, and they were looking for education. There's, there's no one to educate them. And these are the children of the fallen heroes. That, that is just one case. But there are so many other young boys People, and girls yeah. who have lost their parents. And we need to remember them. We, we need to know that this South Sudan matters for them. They deserve better education. They deserve better housing. They deserve better health care. A better living standard for them. So I for believe sure. if South Sudan have to 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 pave the way for the future, then uh, South Sudan matters to these young people. So the general theme is to the young people. Now what about the general composition of South Sudan's economy and political instability? Uh, all all those come in this book. The, the, suffocation. the suffocation of a new democracy. Okay. Because uh, in this book, I've 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 mentioned how how the government need to control the gun control. I've also mentioned about the the wildlife, the banking system in South Sudan. In South Sudan, and uh, I've also mentioned the governance uh, remember the abduction of children is still happen even today among other communities even though that was something that we was happening during colonial and it's still but happening it's today. still continuing today yes and we need to address that for sure so in this uh this suffocation of a new democracy democracy so when did you write this book? Uh, this one came out in 2019. Okay. Yeah, and uh, this one is is 2022 launch. Yeah, yeah, I can remember this one. Yes. So 
you, you, you wrote these things when you were still a, a state uh, minister or after being a state minister? Uh, you know, a human being needs to be productive anytime, anywhere, yeah. as long as you have gone with your knowledge and your ability. I wrote the first book, Why South Sudan Matters, when uh, it's a combination of two books. It started when I was in campus. Uh, I, I published it in, in New York okay. in, in, in 2016 when I was a state minister. Okay. These two books, I wrote them when I'm in exile. And I'm writing because I believe, even though I'm derived my rights to be home and serve my people, I believe I can still give knowledge where I am. And that's why I was able to say, I have the ability to write. I can keep the documentary of South Sudan. I can keep the history. And I believe that this will be a roadmap to all South Sudanese. That we need to live in unity and in peace. And that no one, no young boy or a girl should ever go to exile because of lack of peace in South Sudan. For sure. That's wonderful. The first book you said, Why South Sudan Matters, you wrote it when you were still a state governor. I mean a state, uh, a state minister. minister, right? Yes. Then what were the challenges that you encountered when you were still a state governor? Uh, I mean a state, uh, a state minister. There are a lot of uh, couples of them you know, being a state minister in, uh, in, in, in a society that is, is trying to recover itself, it's a very big challenge. And I remember, uh, as a state minister of, uh, of education, I, I remember very clearly there was one teacher who has not uh, received his salary for, for three months. Yeah. And it was due to the challenges with the name, the name that he has in his ID and the name in the payroll. And uh, he has not been paid. So when it, he has to be brought to my office as a state minister. And uh, when I look at it, the salary, first of all, for the teacher, he, he, it's $5, equivalent of $5. And, and he's still looking in for a it month. in a month. Five dollars, it's, it's, it cannot do anything for, his, for himself and for the family. And uh, I have to dig into my pocket to pay for his three months while I still follow the case to, to, be, to be done by the administration. Oh. So, so, so you find there are a lot of challenges that the budget for the state and for, and for the teachers and for the workers are never uh, supportive that can help them to give them a better living standard. Yeah, for and, sure. And as a state minister, and as somebody who is tasked, you find it's a big challenge that uh, your own people you are working with, your colleagues, they are underpaid. They are underpaid. So it's, it's, it's a big challenge. Yeah, it's really a big challenge. So... That's also uh, another another work that you have done in a very uh, fashionable way. Yeah, and you moving now into the youth, working with them, experiencing some steps with them. What what did you discover about uh, how will or maybe South Sudan? South Sudan uh, is there's, youth. Uh, there's a lot of talent with the youth of South Sudan. The young people of South Sudan are so talented very very smart yeah and uh, and i believe that if if given an opportunity given peace i'm quite sure these young people can do an, an amazing job yeah not only for south sudan but for the africa yeah but you know mm. you know with our with our situation south sudan is the situation that the world is seeing or maybe we have the people who are in diaspora Seas, yeah, cannot allow us to have good production in talents and other things, right? So how are we going to achieve these things? 
I'm sure even you writing your book, The Suffocation of a New Industry, uh, of democracy. a New Democracy, is also a challenge to the government. I can be aware of that. And how can now, how can we extract uh, talents from from our youth if we are having all these challenges? You, you, you know, for any development to happen, eh? yeah, you need peace. It's, it's within yourself to discover your ability. But to discover your own ability, you need a very conducive environment. Yeah, for sure. You need a space to think. People shouldn't carry gun everywhere. You shouldn't traumatize every kid that is being born today. Just give them peace. Just give them the conducive environment and they will be able to, to discover themselves. The talent is within you. It's you, upon you to show it to us. It's upon the community to, to support your idea. So I believe with peace, anything is possible and I'm quite sure that South Sudan can be a great country. Yeah, for sure. So after working as a state minister, have you ever wished to work again in South Sudan as a politician or maybe doing other things? Uh, nobody invite anyone for politics. Yeah, for sure. And uh, you, you don't work calling yourself a politician. You can only address what you see going wrong. And when, if you are able to address it, that become political move or political statement. So I'm not saying that I'm going to stop and do and be a politician, but I will not stop supporting my young brothers and sisters. For sure. So in and short, if you what call that in politics, <laughs> then the <laughs> so what? What is actually your dream about South Sudan? Uh, as I've, as for, first of all, I will read for you this. I envision a solution where all people have religious freedom, and not all people are politicians. Politicians, yeah. I believe, and I am sure that we can make a better South Sudan. South Sudan is a great country, very blessed. Yeah. So blessed with very. Amazing people. With their amazing people. And uh, I envision that South Sudan, as people say, is the, the basket food for Africa. Yeah. I'm quite sure South Sudan can play a great role. So our, in agri our, our agriculture is also rich. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It can play a great role in geopolitical in the region for sure but we will be able to do that if we cooperate we can never live in isolation as south sudanese we need to interact with the east africa they are our brothers we need to interact with other african they are our brothers we need to interact with the world there's a lot to achieve out there in the world there's a lot that we can compete with in the world, not just looking in internally and regionally. Yeah. Yeah. That's wonderful. Thank you very much. So Thank what you. can you tell our youth? Because I know you love working with youth mm -hmm. <laughs> and you admire them succeeding in life. Uh, I can tell my brothers and sisters that uh, let's work together. Let's challenge one another. For by sure. ideas, by talent, show us what you got. Yeah. Let's show the world what we got at South Sudanese. Let's unite as one people. Mm, let's break the boundaries of tribes, of tribes, the and clan, clanism, and all that divide us. Let's have a different view of South Sudan. And we'll see it's beautiful. For sure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm. So, guys, uh, I'm really happy 
for for you, uh, Mr. Malong, uh, for the time that we have taken together. Thank You've you. really done uh, enough, uh, giving us this knowledge of uh, religion and democracy mm. is uh, really huge and rich to us. Mm. So we're very much happy. Thank you. Yeah. So we also sure. hope to we cooperate. Maybe next time. Mm. Yeah, we will see how you are doing. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, I wish you all appreciate. the best. I do not forget to subscribe my brothers and sisters and thank you very much. Thank you. Shukran. Mm -hmm.